All right, Mr. Orlando Canizales, thank you very much for coming on to TheBoxingBar.com, and welcome, sir. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. First question, day one, where were you born and raised? I was born and raised in Laredo, Texas, uh, November 25th, 1965. What was it like there growing up as a kid? I'm the youngest of five boys, uh, you know, and I was kind of uh, the golfer, you know, go for this, go for that. I'm the youngest, and, you know, it, it was all right. I mean, I, I you know, the, the neighborhood where I grew up was really good. I mean, it wasn't uh, that bad. And, you know, it was close to the bus stop, which is, uh, like, the bus stop was uh, two blocks away from where I was raised. And, you know, that's where I spent most of my time after school. I would go to the bus stops. And what was home life like? What was it like there at home with your siblings and your parents? Were you guys pretty close as a family? Oh, yeah. Well, my parents, they were really, we were really close, close. We were a close family. You know, we always have good advice from my parents and you know, also my brothers. So, I mean, we, we had a, I had a good, uh, you know, good life when I was growing up. What about school life? What were you like in school as far as a student? And what were you like in school with other students and other kids? I would get along with everyone. I mean, being, you know, as a matter of fact, the school was across the street where I, where I, where I used to live. I mean, you know, I was born and raised like across the street where I was born. And uh, the school, I would, like I said, I would just, I would just walk. And in the school, I mean, I was a, a good student. I mean, I wouldn't get in trouble. I mean, I mean, life was good. I mean, the students, I would get, you know, A's and B's. And, you know, once in a while, I get C's. Uh, but other than that, it was good. You got into boxing at the age of, what, about 10 years old. How did that fall into your life? How did that come into your life? Uh, well, as a matter of fact, we, um, you know, I started at the Boys and Girls, Girls and Club. I mean, we used to go, my brother Gabby and I, we used to go to the Boys Clubs, and one day, we just, uh, there was this, this, this person, uh, his name is, uh, Mr. Jesse Herrera, who is now, uh, you know, he, he has, he's passed away, but he told me, hey, who, who wants to put the gloves on? So, we just volunteer, and, and that's how it all started. And when did you decide to go ahead and start your amateur career? How did that happen? How did you do as an amateur? Well, I mean, he started because uh, because of my brother Gabby. He was the one that started first. Uh, you know, he's he's five six years older older than me, and uh, he was the one that started going to the gym and, and started fighting. And then I tried it. I, I went one time. I went to the gym with him, and, and that's how you know uh, that's how I I started because of him. When you finished your your amateur career, what was your record? I had 120 amateur fights. I won uh, 180, I lost 12. You know, I fought several Golden Gloves and won several regional Golden Gloves, and then I won the state Golden Gloves, and then went to the Nationals and lost in the semifinals. You know, I'm a the, the National Golden Gloves. So, I mean, I had a good uh, amateur career. Wow, and, and at what point did you decide to stop your amateur career and go on to the pros? Well, I mean, when when I turned 18 after the Olympics, I mean, I, I you know I, I wasn't going to wait another four years to uh, try to for the Olympics. So when I turned 18, I said, well, I mean, I'm going to give it a try. And also, this uh, my former manager, Rob Mr. Rob Espanola, he was after me for a while. He wanted me to go to Houston to sign with him as a professional, and then but I, I didn't do it until I was 18. And on the night of your pro debut on August 25th, 1984, there in Loretto, uh, you were going to debut on, on the undercard of your brother, Gabby, making a title defense against Calvin Seabrook, who you would later fight for the title with. How did it feel, and was it added pressure knowing that you're going to fight uh, on the undercard of your brother and there in Loretto, Texas? Yeah, well, there, there was a lot of pressure. You know, Gabby was going to was fight for the USBA title and, and, and be my first professional fight, I guess. And there, was a lot, there was a lot of pressure because people were expected to, to, to win and, and, and a lot of expected good things from you. So, so yeah, there was a lot of pressure, but also I was excited that I was being able to make my pro debut here in my hometown, Marino, Texas. And what do you remember about your pro debut the actual day, uh, you know, when you were in the locker room before you went through the trades for the first time? Were you nervous? Were you scared? What were your feelings at that moment? Well, I wasn't really. I mean, I guess, I guess it's like a. I was. Uh, I had goosebumps, and, and you know. Uh, but other than that, I was excited, you know, because I was, you know, like I said, I was fighting my hometown and being my first fight. I mean, there was a lot in front of a lot of people, and so in a way, I was always excited. And then of course, I had goosebumps, and you know, planning to do good for because I was fighting my hometown. You won that fight, but after it, did, was there a lot of differences that you saw from the amateurs to the pros, you know, as far as no headgear and lighter gloves, but at the same time, your hands might fly more, but you're going to be receiving harder shots. Was there a big difference to you? 
Well, I mean, there's a difference in, in that aspect that, you know, well, there was no hair here and smaller gloves, but, you know, it's, it's still boxing. I mean, I had a, I had, I've been training for, for professional for almost eight years, so, or as an amateur, rather, I was, I was an amateur for eight years, so I had a lot of experience and, and I felt comfortable with it, and, but I know it was a little bit different, you know, back, you know, being a professional without hair and stuff, but I, I, I knew more, more, what, more or less what to expect because, like I said, I, I've been in the sport for, for a while. Already. On your 13th fight, you fought Olympian Paul Gonzalez, and you got your first loss on that day. What do you remember about that fight against Paul Gonzalez, who was the Olympic champion? You know, being my first uh, big uh, title fight, I was kind of uh, kind of nervous and, and also uh, excited at the same time, being that you know I, I was getting the opportunity to fight for uh, an NBA a national title, an Olympic title, and uh, fighting the Olympian. But I mean, it was a uh, it was a good fight. I mean, uh, it was a learning experience for me. I learned a lot from that fight. I mean, I didn't know we expected it was going to be outdoors. I thought it was going to be indoors. So it, that that I mean, I don't want any excuses, but it did affect me a little bit being that it was outdoors. And several fights up, you get your chance to fight for a world title. You fight Calvin Seabrooks, who we talked about uh, that your brother defended against on the same card as your pro debut. What was it like knowing that you were going to finally get your chance to fight for the title before that fight happened? What were your feelings or what was it like when you got that call or that notice that you were going to be getting this dream shot for a world title? Well, prior to that one, I had um, I had fought for the I had fought for the USBA uh, Junior Bantamweight title against Lewis Curtis. I beat him on acting out, and, and then I got the phone call and that I was going to be, you know, and that was, that's my goal, you know, I wanted to be a world champion like my brother, and uh, well, that was my goal, and, and then the opportunity come, come you know, knocks that, they offered me to fight for the Bantamweight title, and, and, and you know, it was, I'm just glad and happy that uh, they, they gave me a, a, a chance to fight for the title, and I took the, uh, I took the opportunity. What do you think of him as a competitor in that fight? Was it one of your toughest fights? You won by TKO in the fifteenth round. What was it? What was Calvin Seabrooks like as a fighter? I mean, he's a tough guy. I mean, he, he never gave up. I mean, he, he put up a good fight. And like I said, he's a, he's a tough guy. For I mean, he, he was a tough guy. I mean, he fought all over the world in defending title for I don't know about five, five, six, six times uh, across uh, overseas. And uh, so, like I said, I mean, he's a tough guy, and he was a tough. I mean, he was a tough fighter. And after you fought him, you fought Jimmy Navarro, knocked him out in the first round, and then you again fought uh, Seabrooks. And you would go on, and, and uh, eventually a few fights up, you fought Paul Gonzalez again to get the rematch. You knocked him out in the second round. How did it feel like to get that uh, avenged uh, loss off of you? Well, I mean, it's it's always sweet when you get a you know when you be able to, to avenge losses. I mean, I think I did it like two or three times on my losses. Uh, I was able to, to avenge those losses. But it's always sweet, and then I felt, you know, being that I was a world champion, and, and he, it was now it was my title, and it's not his title, so it was something that um, I mean, something that I had to prove myself, and, and, and I went out there and did what I had to do to win. You had a record of sixteen of uh, sixteen title defenses as a bantamweight. I mean, I believe that record still stands. How does it feel knowing that you still have a record, or you got to a peak like that high uh, in your career? Well, I mean, it's it's really exciting and, and and just I'm very proud of it. I mean, it's like uh, you know, not it's not like every day you you, you kind of break records, and so I'm really excited and, and really thrilled about it, and, and really like I said, proud of it that that I wasn't you know I didn't lose my title in the ring. I, I left my title to move up to another weight class, so that's also I'm, I'm something I'm proud of that uh, I never lost my titles, but it's uh, something that I'm you know. I know I understand that records are meant to be broken, but hopefully not soon. <laughs> yeah. And that's true. And you go up and wait, like you said, uh, and you fought with Wilfredo Vasquez. What was that fight like with the great champion like Vasquez was? Well, I mean, I I, I expect a tough fight for Vasquez, even though that he was at I don't know at the at his later peak of his career, and um, he was wearing like thirty five, but. You know, he, he, I mean, it was a tough fight. I didn't, I didn't expect him to be as quick as I thought he was. Uh, but I mean, he, you know, I underestimated him. And, uh, but it was a good, it was, it, that was one of the toughest fights. He's one of the strong, uh, hardest punches that I ever fought. And you would fight on after that Vasquez fight for another four years until 1999. 
At what point did you decide to say, you know what, this is it, and maybe it's time to hang him up? Well, I I um, I, I felt burned after I fought a uh, I fought my last fight in Philadelphia. Uh, just uh, against Frankie Toledo. Yes, I fought Frankie Toledo, and I just I just felt burned out. I mean, I said, you know what, I think it's time to 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 do other things. And you know, at the age of thirty three, I just you know thought, you know, like I said, uh, I think I'm, it's time for me to to uh, to do something else, and that's why I. I decided to do that after I lost with Frankie Toledo. And looking back at your career, uh, was there any was there anything that you would change about your career? You know, looking back, you know, through all those times and all those fights and all those years, is there things that you would say? You know, maybe I should have done this a little different, or are you just content with everything you did and how you did it? Well, yeah, no, I'm content with what I did. I think maybe now that I think about it, and not. Uh, you know, because I used to spar every day. I think uh, nowadays, uh, now I think I would spar every other day instead of sparring every day. Uh, I just think it takes a lot of toll uh, on your body, and uh, I just you know think that I would do it. that would be a little bit different now. My training regimen. But would you would you be able to say that you reach your goals? Uh, that your goals, like that you had maybe going into the sport, do you think you reached them or surpassed surpassed them? Well, I think I surpassed them being, you know, that I was able to do, to break the, the record and make, uh, and chat all kinds of history, uh, or chat all kinds of records and, and make history in the sport of boxing. I think I surpassed that. And then, you know, being the, ultimately being inducted to the Boxing Hall of Fame, that was, you know, that's the uh, ultimate goal for, for any fighter. And so I guess I think I surpassed in, in, in my accomplishment. Like nowadays, after all those fights that you might have had, all the sparring sessions and, and training that you had over all the years that you did, and like we said, all the fights themselves, is there anything, any like hurts or pains or bumps that you feel now, uh, after it's all said and done, that you say, you know what, this is probably from all the years of boxing? Do you feel any of that stuff? No, no, not at all. I mean, I'm still in English shape and good health, and uh, no, I haven't. I don't have any, you know, uh, side effects to, to any of that uh, about my boxing career. Not at all. And one question I gotta ask: I mean, you and your brother were simultaneously world champions in the same weight class, kind of like the Klitschko brothers, I, or I guess I think in uh, for the heavyweights right at the moment. Was there ever tensions between you two because you guys were two champions, or was is? Uh, Blood, I guess, thicker than water, and that had that never changed your guys' relationship. No, no, that never changed our relationship. You know, my brother and I, we we love each other, and we're like I said, we're a close family, and we never thought about fighting each other or any tensions like that. I mean, I, he, you know, I, I wish him the best, and I did. I hope I, he, he, you know, I hope he, he would do the best, and he he, he would he also uh, thought about me the same. I mean, he wished me the best, and. But like I said, there was never any tensions and who was better or anything like that. It's just that, uh, you know, we were just glad that both were champions at the same time. Were you guys like kings and celebrities there in Loretto during your champion, during your years as champions? Oh, yes, of course. I mean, people, everywhere we go, they, they, they recognize us and, and they're, you know, very proud that, you know, we're, we're representing Loretto, you know, in a high standard and being world champions. And, you know, it's not like, you know, you get a champion, you know, any any day or any city and so they're you know we're, we're very well organized in the city of Laredo. Well there have been the end of 2000, uh, 2008 or the beginning of 2009 when you got the notice that you were going to be inducted into the International Boxing Hall of Fame. I mean that's the elite group that everybody wants to be in when they get into the sport and you get the call that you're going to you're going to you know get inducted in. How did you feel like at that moment when you got that notice or phone call that you were going to be inducted? Oh, I was just, you know, I, I was just so excited. I mean, I was I was taking a course in, in, in the university here in Colorado, and 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 they, I received a call from uh, Mr. Boney uh, from the Boxing Hall of Fame, and um, I mean, I was just uh, excited. I mean, I was just so happy and excited at the time. I, I mean, I was going to be inducted. I mean, every year I was hoping that and waiting for that call and when went you know, out because I, you know, I thought that one day I would be there, and so it finally arrived, and I was just like, I said, so happy and excited too that I was that finally I was gonna be inducted. You know, it feels so good to hear that you're doing well, you're doing fine. You can obviously talk and answer all these questions perfectly. Looking back at it, 
and looking back at your whole career and your life, and I know you're going to be here for another 100 years, but how do you want Orlando Canizales to be remembered by what I call the three big S, your fa- your friends, your family, your fans? How do you want how do you want Orlando Canizales to be remembered? Well, I want to be remembered that, you know, as as was, I mean, there's, I know there's been a lot of great fighters in that way, and I just be, want to be recognized as one of the, as one of the best fighters in the world, and, and of course, one of the best, you know, being, uh, uh, like to help out people, and people know that, and it's just that, that you know, that I'm a, I was a, 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 a nice, outgoing guy that would, you know, I would go out of my way to help people, and basically, you know, like I said, just to be in that, to be recognized as one of the, you know, one of the best fighters in the world, and of course, a, a nice person as well. And you are, and you do deserve everything you, you received. And God bless you, and thank you very much for coming on to theboxingbar.com. It was a pleasure, and it was an honor to have you on. And I thank you very much, Mr. Cotty Salas, for doing this. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me. It's always a pleasure. And like I said, I, you know, I really, I really thank you very much. And like I said, thank you, thank you very much.